Good morning. This is Monday morning, uh, the day after Easter Sunday, and I hope that you had a really blessed time yesterday with your family, and whether it was online church or online family, as I did both online church here and online church in the UK and online communion with my family. So it was a wonderful time. But this morning I woke up with a slight heaviness of spirit, and I was thinking about the thought that after Resurrection Sunday comes Monday. And what does that mean for the believer? We've celebrated the resurrection of Jesus. We've had a wonderful time yesterday focusing on that and believing that. But Monday brings me to the place of how does this change my life? How does it impact me? And how am I going to live my life from now on? If I truly believe in the resurrection power of Jesus, well, I'd like us to just look at uh, the second book of Peter and chapter one. As I was reading this morning, I was thinking about how how do we live Monday after Sunday? And so here's what Peter says to Christians who are living in suffering. Um, and in chap in First Peter, we we read uh, in another lesson that he says that we have a living hope and we're kept by his power and he's still speaking to these suffering believers um, and he says to them in verse 2 grace and peace be multiplied to you in the knowledge of God and of Jesus Christ our Lord we've been working in uh, looking into our workbook too about knowing God and one of the reasons we want to know God from our point of view is that grace and peace is multiplied to us the more that we pursue the knowledge of God. And he goes on to say, his divine power has given us everything we need for life and godliness through the knowledge of him who has called us by glory and virtue. So through the Holy Spirit power in us, he gives us the ability to live an abundant life and to have a godly life as we know him. The more that we know God, the more we will be able to live an abundant life and live a godly life because of his spirit living in us. And then he goes on to say, by which we've been given exceedingly great and precious promises that through you may be partakers of the divine nature. Through these you may be partakers of the divine nature, having escaped the corruption that is in the world through lust. So through the divine promises, that's the word of God, we have received the divine nature. We partake of the divine nature that Jesus had. And I think about our wings, we talk about in the butterfly teaching, that we have been given wings of spirit and truth. And how do I live through Monday after Sundays? I need to make sure that my wings are filled with the knowledge of God, his Holy Spirit power in me, and his promises, which are both together bringing his divine character in me, and causing me to live out the life that he has invited me to live with him through his resurrection power. And it comes, both of these are strengthened, his power and his spirit in me are strengthened the more that I know him. And how am I going to get to know him? In his word. And as he lives his word out in me, then I will have the power to overcome the Mondays. And he goes on to say that um, the way that we're going to build our faith, he says, giving all diligence add to your faith virtue to virtue knowledge to knowledge self-control to self-control perseverance to perseverance godliness to godliness brotherly kindness to brotherly kindness love and if these things are yours and abound you will be neither unfruitful or barren in the knowledge of the lord jesus christ for he who lacks these things is short-sighted even to blindness and has forgotten that he was cleansed from his old sins Therefore, brethren, be even more diligent to make your call and election sure. For if you do these things, you will never stumble. For so an entrance will be supplied to you abundantly into the everlasting kingdom of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. For this reason, I will not be negligent to remind you always of these things, though you know and are established in the present truth. Yes, I think it's right, as long as I'm in this tent, to stir you up by reminding you, knowing that shortly I must put off my tent, just as our Lord Jesus Christ showed me. Moreover, I will be careful to ensure that you always have a reminder of these things after my decease. Uh, I'm really impressed by the fact that Peter, three times in this um, passage, 
he says, I will remind you, I will remind you, I will remind you. He says, I won't be negligent. I won't forget to remind you. I want to stir you up by reminding you. And I want to remind you even after I've gone. And many times we know these truths uh, of God's word. We think we know them. But I think on the Monday after Sunday, now that we know the truth of the resurrection and we've learned it from his word and through the witness of his Holy Spirit in us, we have to continuously remind ourselves uh, through being in God's promises and through lifting one another and encouraging one another. That's how we build our faith to live through the Mondays until we see Jesus again face to face. And so that means that we need to grow in our virtue and that's in doing in our goodness, in knowledge and self-control, perseverance, kindness and brotherly love. And that's the growing in our faith of knowing Jesus Christ. Then we'll never be unfruitful in knowing him. So this morning, I want to encourage you. There is hope living in the Mondays. Now we have to live by faith and not by sight. The disciples got to see Jesus and then he was taken from them and now they had to live by faith through the Holy Spirit who was in them. And that same spirit is in you today. And so you have his life and his godliness living in you to help you live through every single Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, Saturday until he comes again. He is with us to help us to persevere and to love others as he loved us. Well, I love you and I encourage you, live in Monday today with the faith of the resurrection power that we experienced on Sunday.